It's the sideburns that come Carrie Blau notices that facial hair goes in and out of style, and she's picked up on something. Facial hair is back. As a curator, Carrie saw a way to get people interested in visiting the Museum of Frederick County History. So, she approached her boss with an idea that she couldn't shave for later. I must ask you a question. <laughs> and a year later, the exhibit was open to the public. It turns out there's a long tale to the history of facial hair. Facial hair has a history as long as mankind's history. I have information about the first shaving implements, which were sharpened stones used to, um, and I think it sounds so torturous, uh, used to scrape the hair off of a man's face. So in this section, I decided to use some of our framed works of art because I have a lot of photographs throughout the rest of the exhibit. And we have Bradley Tyler Johnson here. He was a general in the Confederate States of America while Frederick County and Maryland was a Union state during the Civil War. There were a lot of Southern sympathizers and Bradley Johnson was one of them. And so he became a general and he has a great goatee. It comes out to a wonderful point here. Although most men grow facial hair as a fashion statement, it originally began as a symbol of status right around 400 BC in that era, uh, facial hair was really um, important and you, um, you earned your status by your facial hair. Most people wouldn't get so attached to stories about beards, but her father may have something to do with her appreciation of facial hair. So he had the mustache and then a full beard and um, I can remember when he shaved his beard off one time, my sister started crying and screaming because she didn't recognize him. Army Staff Sergeant Richard Lauer, Frederick, Maryland.